Bitcoin has seen a short-term correction following the interest rate data release a few hours ago. Where is Bitcoin likely to go next? Is Bitcoin still bullish? And why the majority of people are incorrect about the correlation between falling interest rates and risk asset prices? These are the questions we're answering in the video today. Let's dive on in. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic day today. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at both the macro and short-term price action in a massive amount of detail, going over absolutely everything you need to know about what is happening and what is likely to occur next. We'll also briefly go over the FOMC meeting and discuss the correlation between interest rates and the macro directional expectations of the risk asset markets. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that con button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, go ahead and check us out on Telegram. It is the first link down below. You'll get access to charts updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you were interested in joining our VIP, we do have a sale at the moment. You can go ahead and find out more information about our sale by clicking the first pinned comment above. You can find all information about our VIP membership, including a detailed video explaining exactly what you'll get access to and even show you inside the VIP channel itself. You can also find our entire trading track record for 39 months of trading data with over a 80% win rate. Go ahead and check it out. Nearly 700 members in there. You get access to both the main channel and the group chat if you were interested. Go ahead and check it out and let's dive into a video. So taking a look at the last 24 hours, we did have that FOMC meeting, and of course, the FOMC meeting historically has always really caused a bit of volatility in the price action. In this particular instance, we saw the interest rate left unchanged, we saw a pause on the interest rates, and the common narrative discussed moving toward the September release is that the Federal Reserve is happy with the progress inflation is making, which is moving down, of course, and they are likely to see an interest rate cut in September. Taking a look at that interest rate data, we can see over on the September data over here, it's a 90.5% probability we see a 25 basis point reduction and a 9.5% probability based on what the expectations are of right now, this can change, that we see a 50 basis point reduction. So overall, the market is expecting a interest rate reduction in the near future. Now, there's a lot of discussion in regards to interest rates going down, resulting in market corrections. So we're gonna be discussing why that is and also is not the case in today's video, explaining the mechanisms behind how financial markets move in accordance to changing costs of debt. Let's go ahead and jump over to the short-term price action. As you can see, Bitcoin has seen a pretty large move on the short-term toward the downside. This, The majority of this downward move, you can see in the last eight hours, as two red candles occurred directly on and after the interest rate release. So you can see how this large economic event has had a direct implication on the short-term price action, pushing Bitcoin back down to 64.6. As you would know, 64.6 is still sitting above the major 64 to 63,000 critical support, which we'll be discussing in today's video, again, why that level is so significant for the bulls to hold and what implications will occur if we break below it. We'll come back to the Bitcoin chart. Looking at the S&P 500, we'll discuss this chart in much more detail in just a moment. The S&P 500 is still continuing upwards. Once again, we are expecting the S&P 500 to continue aggressively toward the upside, provided that our prior high is able to sustain, particularly looking at this 5,300 level, if we are able to sustain above this high point, we will likely see a directional continuation upward for S&P. We can look at the traditional asset market and see that the traditional asset market, in fact, responded quite bullish to the interest rate news. We have now seen 
a pretty strong reversal for these markets. Taking a look at the S&P 500 specifically, that daily candle really pushing back up from lows around 5,450 up to around 5,600. So a fantastic bounce for traditional assets over here. Let's go ahead guys and jump over to the DXY and then move into Bitcoin. So for DXY guys, again, not all that much change in the last 24 hours. We did see a short term correction back down to retest that base of support at 104. We are watching for a breakdown of 104 to see a correction into this 103 range. That is it for the broader markets and the short term updates. Let's jump into the crux of today's analysis. We are going to be discussing in massive, massive detail the exact mechanism behind how reductions in interest rates impact the macro expectations of risk asset markets going through a very interesting flow chart over here as well as going over historical implications of prior interest rate corrections and we're going to be explaining why the common believed narrative which is interest rates dropping results in market corrections is not the causation it is simply a correlation we'll be explaining why that will not occur in this instance or likely does not guarantee it will occur in this instance and we'll discuss that in today's video and then of course jumping into our short-term analysis and our macro analysis of bitcoin let's jump in a quick word from today's video sponsor before we do i'd like to introduce our partner bitunix BitUnix is a global non-KYC, no country restriction exchange, making it a perfect exchange to trade on if you're from the USA, from Canada, the Netherlands, or just prefer to trade without KYC. This exchange is a futures and spot exchange with over 200 different trading pairs and some of the lowest fees in the game. If you sign up with my link down below, you'll get access to 15% off your trading fees as well as an exclusive reward center where you can claim up to a multitude in USDT prizes. So go ahead and sign up with my link down below for 15% off and I'll see you in there. Okay guys, let's start off with the interesting part of today's video and I find this stuff absolutely fascinating personally. If we take a look at the common belief narrative, which is a narrative I've been seeing a lot develop over the last few months, particularly on YouTube and in cryptocurrency, and really the whole nine yards. You know, people have really been saying much, much more recently that in the prior instances where we saw the interest rates correct, we saw the markets on the S&P 500 and the traditional asset markets, more importantly, risk asset markets, correct as well. Let's go ahead and take a look. We saw a reduction in interest rates start at around August 2007, and following that, we saw a pretty start, uh, pretty sharp directional, macro directional move downwards for the S&P 500 and for the risk asset market as a whole. If we look back at 2000, we saw a very similar thing. The prior interest rate correction or the drop in interest rates, the pivot point resulted in a macro downtrend for interest rates. But what we didn't see in the 2019 scenario when we saw that reduction in interest rates, we did not see a negative reaction in markets. In fact, we saw macro continuations upwards for the markets. So it poses the question, is this an instance of correlation and not causation, or are we simply wrong? Are we looking at it from a different perspective? So what we fail or what people fail to mention in the prior two instances, the exact two data points they use to justify the statement that interest rates reducing will result in a market correction, they use these two data points. They use a data point of 2007, they use a data point of 2000. What they fail to mention is during these exact moments of which interest rates went down and the market Markets corrected, there were two major events occurring. We have the dot, uh, the dot com crash, and we had the global financial correction or the global financial crash occur during these times. In fact, the global financial crash started one month prior to the interest rates reducing. Again, it is correlation, not causation. We know that in periods of mass fear, which these black swan events are commonly known to produce, we generally see the dollar rise and we see money flow out of risk assets. So we can't deduce the fact that markets correct as a consequence of interest rates reducing, when in the two data points we have seen this occur from, we use these two data points to justify it happening in the game, we had two major events that had a stronger impact on the market psychology, 
the market psychology of investors and participants, but also, again, the risk appetites of these investors, which in times of mass fear, draw or drag risk asset markets down. So I wrote over here, both instances we had major black swan events. Mass fear equals risk assets dropping. The instance where there was no black swan event, but interest rates did drop, we did not see a major correction for the macro directional expectations for the markets. Therefore, what we notice is that this is a correlation, not a causation. The markets dropped as a result of the mass fear, not as a result of interest rates reducing. If the markets corrected, this time, it would be a result of people expecting the markets to correct as a misrepresented or misguided perspective of what impact or what correlation reducing interest rates have on risk assets. Meaning, if everyone is scared that we are going to see a correction in the markets as a consequence of pivoting risk assets because we have seen a correlation in the past, we may very well see a short-term correction for risk assets at the moment of which we see a pivot in interest rates. Now again, that is correlation, not causation. And this answers the question on the short term. What will the market perceive the interest rate change to be and not what impact will the interest rates change have on the macro expectations for risk assets? So we could see a short-term pullback as a consequence of the majority of people expecting a short-term pullback, but what impact will a short-term or what impact will a pivot have on the macro outlook for risk assets? That is when we come to this chart. So let's take a look, guys. Interest rates, inflation, debt to service ratios, bunch of terms we're going to be using. We'll explain them as we go. As we know, as inflation starts to drop, inflation starts to drop as a consequence of increased interest rates. We eventually get to a point where interest rates can start to fall. We can start to ease interest rates. And that's what the Federal Reserve has been discussing. Discussing, And we're going to go over this very, very briefly. As I can speak for hours about this. We're going to go quite quickly. So interest rates falling. What happens when the interest rate falls in value? We see debt to service ratios for companies fall. This is a massive thing. Because not only does it represent that the companies will have healthier balance sheets, but what it represents is that they will have more available cash flow to acquire risk assets because, again, their debt obligations, whether it be short-term or long-term debt obligations, decrease. So the amount of money that they need to expend on these obligations decrease, and therefore they have greater cash flows to spend on new risk assets or risk assets such as income-producing assets that can actually generate income for these companies moving forward. Furthermore, when we see interest rates fall, we see the cost of debt decrease. If the cost of debt decreases and companies' balance sheets become healthier as a consequence of falling debt to service ratios, companies can acquire cheaper debt to purchase income producing assets, which means they invest more in risk assets. Now, this process takes many months to play out. It's not going to immediately happen. It takes many months following interest rates reducing for this to play out, hence why I'm talking about the macro outlook of the interest rate reduction. So this is a very, very bullish thing, guys. It is fantastically bullish. But if we have to look at individuals, if we see interest rates fall, we generally see the dollar falling. We generally see the cost of goods and assets fall. The reason we see the dollar falling is because inflation will start to rise back up again as debt uh, as debt cost of debt decreases and spending in the economy starts to grow. So we generally see the dollar fall, we generally see inflation rise, we see the cost of debt decrease, and generally, it is going to be sector dependent. We see some cost and goods and services, uh, cost and goods and services decrease. It depends on the sector. Again, we can go into that another day, but I don't think it's necessary for a cryptocurrency channel. With that, we see available household cash increase. Now, this is a consequence of again short-term and long-term debt obligations decreasing, which increases retail spending on income-producing assets. More money. This is the as this is the whole notion. As as a consequence of interest rates falling, more money eventually flows into assets and out of the dollar, pushing again inflation upward and risk assets higher. So when we're looking at something like this and we say, well, interest rate is falling so bearish for assets, we're going to go down. 
In fact, the mechanisms behind the markets actually is contradictory to that statement. And the only two data points we have to justify that statement are data points which are embedded in correlation and not causation. That is what I'm gonna to have to say. If we see any sort of correction on the macro as a consequence of falling interest rates, I will reduce that down to the psychology of the market and not the mechanisms themselves. Because people expect a correction, there will likely be a correction. And it is simply as that. The market at the end of the day, is emotional but the macro outlook is still bullish let's get into bitcoin we are jumping into it talking about bitcoin short term so let's start actually over here as we can see bitcoin is corrected from the seventy thousand dollar region we have seen one very interesting thing we are retesting the rsi downtrend as you can see that daily rsi is being retested we want to hold above that we definitely do want to hold about that level very important level to be paying attention to from a perspective of momentum we drop below there we flip back negative the momentum becomes negative Negative momentum increases the probability for an extended downtrend in the price action, potentially even lower. Very important we hold. If we look at our diagonals, we have our, got our mid, our mid trend. We have got our dotted trend line, the mid level, a very important that we want to hold. If we drop below the mid level, we increase the likelihood of a directional continuation to the range low. While we sit above the mid level, we are still in this bullish region. We can still see continuations higher for Bitcoin. For Bitcoin to commence the leg upwards, we need to break through the downtrending resistance of the channel. For Bitcoin to invalidate the channel and commence that leg downward, we need to break below the range low of the channel. Until then, Bitcoin is still in this sideways consolidation of the descending channel formation. So again, we've accomplished the bullish retest of 70,000 from the range low. We are now seeing a short-term correction. If the short-term correction can sustain above support and create a higher low, we will likely see directional continuations back upwards. Let's really quickly discuss the significance of these levels on this chart. This is going to be our three-day chart. What we can see, guys, is the one level we are really focusing on here. And let's go ahead and actually delete everything really quickly. This level, this particular line, the leading span B of the Ichimoku cloud, is by far the most important level we are watching for Bitcoin, okay? This level, historically, every single time we have dropped below, you can go back yourself and take all the time you want on the 3-day chart. Every single time we've dropped below the leading span B on the 3-day chart, we have seen corrections from 15 to 71%. Every time. There has not been a single time where we haven't seen a correction for Bitcoin between 15 to 71%. So we know that this is a strong bearish trigger point for a macro directional downwards. Where does it sit? Well, it sits at 55,000. Where is that level? Guess, guess where that level is? 55,000 is smack bang right over here in this liquidity pocket. In fact, it represents the downtrend of the channel. So we know that a loss of the downtrend of the channel would trigger the bearish validation point on the macro triggering a macro continuation downwards if we look at the uptrend we have been above this point ever since 20,000 we have been in a uptrend since here if we want to look at it technically we have been in an uptrend for bitcoin since here this is all uptrend we are still in an uptrend if we break below we enter a downtrend so bitcoin is in a uptrend until proven not innocent until proven guilty uptrend until proven not whatever you want to say bitcoin is bullish until the bearish validations are met and those bearish validations have not been met on the macro yet we've come close to it but we haven't quite done so okay so pay attention to that level very very closely guys we lose that level bitcoin is in a world of trouble another level you can watch is the three-day goals in channel by the time if we do come back down and retest the three-day goals in channel will be most likely retesting that Leading span B at the same time, we'll have a double confluence breakdown if that does occur. At that point, I will have zero doubt in my mind we are going lower. That is where I will have zero doubt we are going lower if we break below the leading span B. Until then, I think we are bullish, we're macro bullish, the technicals are suggesting we can go higher, and we are going to be trusting those charts. Let's jump into the short-term price action. Now, that doesn't mean the short-term is looking fantastic. The short-term's not, right? We can have the macro bullish perspective look great and we can be in a lot of trouble in the short term. That's what we're seeing over here. We've seen a short term correction and there are two good things about this correction. The good thing number one 
is we haven't broken below 63 to 64. And as we said already, 63 to 64 is the midline. Every time we break below the midline, we see directional continuations to range lows. So we know that 63 to 64 is the trigger point for a potential directional continuation to retest 55K. And we break 55K, we go lower. We can bounce from there, but if we break there, we go lower. So we know that the midline is important. So the good news, number one, we haven't broken below. Good news, number two, we do have this short-term uptrend we are retesting nearly, and this is a potential bouncing point. Furthermore, if we're the RSI, we can see a very premature bit of absorption developing. This is going to be a lower low on the RSI, right? And a higher low on the price action. So again, I'm taking this with a grain of salt because we have not closed this four hour candle yet. But if we do see that price action retest this uptrend and bounce, we could see some bullish absorption and that could mark a reversal for Bitcoin. So from a structural perspective, provided we are able to sustain above 63,000, we shouldn't expect it to be lost and therefore we should expect reversals to develop. If we lose 63,000, we are in a lot of trouble. Bitcoin could move towards that $60,000 area of support. Where are we looking specifically? If we look at this change of character over here, this horizontal resistance, and I might go ahead and change this to, let's go make this one uh, a little thicker. This level over here, you can see back in the past, if we look at that particular level, we found our higher low. When we broke down, we saw a strong correction. We held under, we broke above that level as we broke up the five week long downtrend and we officially entered a uptrend. So this is the level we are watching for if Bitcoin retests that level, we would potentially be looking for bounces to develop. But first and foremost, if we break 63,000, we are looking for a target at 60K. That is the short term price action. I would not be quick to jump in right now. I would be paying attention and very much just watching how things develop over the next 24 hours, of course, on the short term, it does look like Bitcoin is going to be, go a little bit lower. We are at least going to be retesting this diagonal uptrend. If we lose the uptrend, we're in the $63,000 region. If we lose the $63,000 region, we are moving into the 60K region. Provided we remain above support, support is support until it is not, and we do expect bounces to develop. That is it, guys. I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and we'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. We'll have a lot more to talk about a lot more development on the price action. I have a very clear understanding of whether or not we're going to bounce tomorrow or whether or not we're going to be correcting lower. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.